Okay, hi there. I'm back again with another in our key diagram series, uh, following on from uh, a little cluster of videos on Monopoly. Uh, let's take a few minutes together to think about Monopoly and another type of economic efficiency, namely productive efficiency. So one of the potential advantages of Monopoly, and I stress that word potential, is that a dominant firm, a firm of perhaps, let's say, 25, 40% of the market, I might be able to achieve significant internal economies of scale. Those are the advantages of large-scale production. And that means that the average cost and the marginal cost of supplying to the market might be, might be lower than if the market uh, wasn't a monopoly, but it was fragmented with lots and lots of relatively smaller competing businesses. So in theory, if the economies of scale are big enough, the profit-maximising monopoly price might even be a little lower than the equilibrium price in a competitive market. And that would lead to higher consumer surplus, in other words, a gain in welfare. So it's just something to be aware of, that one of the advantages of monopoly could be significant economies of scale. And I just wanted to share with you a diagram that you might be able to use in your analysis on this kind of question. So here's a market, downward sloping demand curve, uh, and I'm assuming here again, constant cost. So you have to tell the examiner you're dropping the assumption of diminishing returns. You're just assuming the cost of supply is the same. The marginal and the average cost is the same there. And uh, a competitive market would be at point uh, B, output Q1, price C, because that's where supply meets demand in the market. Fine, and that gives us level of consumer surplus A, B, C. That could be the case that the industry might become, uh, not necessarily overnight, but over time, a monopoly. So let's contrast the situation here in the market with the price at C in a competitive situation with what happens if one firm takes over the market and because it's consolidated, they can now achieve some significant economies of scale. So what might happen is this. The unit cost of production, the marginal cost of production, in fact, might fall dramatically from, from C to D. Notice this is, a, this is a, an assumption here that the monopolist is better placed, better able to achieve big economies of scale. Now, in this situation, you get a little bit of a surprising result. A profit maximizing monopoly will produce here an output Q2, where marginal cost meets marginal revenue. Draw up to the demand curve and then draw across and you get the price E. Uh, and I've labeled F, that's quite important. So here, with big scale economies, the price that's charged is E, which is lower than C, and therefore there's a gain of C, B, F, E in consumer surplus. So consumer surplus increases from A, B, C to A, F, E because of the gains in productive efficiency uh, we associate perhaps with a dominant firm. And of course the firm can also make a high profit because the price they're charging E is well above the unit cost D, so the green area shows the super normal profit. Now this might be worth taking a little, maybe a screenshot adding to your notes. In theory, in this situation, if the scale economies are big enough, then that you might actually get a lower price with monopoly. It's one of those little quirky, slightly counterintuitive outcomes that, that actually particularly very good for evaluation in a monopoly question. It does, however, take very large economies of scale for this effect to occur. So uh, perhaps I strongly suggest uh, a revising natural monopoly as part of your revision. And of course, in evaluation, in the real world, the lack of competition, the absence of contestability might lead to the monopolist experiencing X inefficiencies arising from low productivity and rising fixed costs. You know, when you don't, that, you don't face the day-to-day -day competition, oftentimes you can let your costs go out of control and, and the output that you're producing, the cost pin, is well above what it really should be. And that, of course, is a loss of efficiency in the market. But there we go, a few minutes with you on monopoly and productive efficiency. Hopefully that was useful ahead of your exams. See you soon.